Coming up, a senior Tory MP and vice chair of the influential Backbench 1922 committee has accused the government of trying to blackmail its own MPs against plotting to remove Boris Johnson. William Ragg says party whips have made numerous threats to undermine Conservative parliamentarians declining to support Big Dog Johnson by leaking fictional or exaggerated negative stories about them to the media and to withdraw funding from projects in their constituencies. This criminal behaviour may turn out to be one scandal that Cressida Dick cannot refuse to investigate. Stay tuned. If you enjoy the channel, please like, subscribe and get notified of new videos every Wednesday and Saturday. William Ragg was one of the first Tory MPs to go public with the view that the position of Prime Minister in hiding Johnson was untenable, whatever the outcome of the so-called independent inquiry by civil servant Sue Gray into her boss's behaviour. He's also one of a handful of MPs who have publicly confirmed that they have submitted a letter to the chairman of the Backbench 1922 committee, Graham Brady, calling for a no-confidence vote in Johnson. The retribution from the party machine appears to have been swift and brutal, as Ragg is now accusing his own party of blackmailing Tory MPs. He's alleging that threats were made to cut funding to the constituencies of MPs who oppose Johnson and that embarrassing stories would be leaked to the press. Take a look at what Ragg had to say himself. In recent days, a number of members of Parliament have faced pressures and intimidation from members of the government because of their declared or assumed desire for a vote of confidence in the party leadership of the Prime Minister. It is, of course, the duty of the Government Whip's office to secure the government's business in the House of Commons. However, it is not their function to breach the ministerial code in threatening to withdraw investments from members of Parliament's constituencies which are funded from the public purse. Additionally, reports to me and others of members of staff at Number 10 Downing Street, special advisers, government ministers and others encouraging the publication of stories in the press seeking to embarrass those who they suspect of lacking confidence in the Prime Minister is similarly unacceptable. The intimidation of a Member of Parliament is a serious matter. Moreover, the reports of which I am aware would seem to constitute blackmail. As such, it would be my general advice to colleagues to report these matters to the Speaker of the House of Commons and the Commissioner of the Metropolitan Police. Asked directly about Ragg's statement by reporters, Johnson said, I've seen no evidence to support any of those allegations. Which is interesting because that's not a denial, it just sounds like a bit of arse covering for when the evidence does emerge, as it surely will. Likewise, no Downing Street spokesperson has, at the time of recording this video, come out and officially denied the story. All they've said so far is, we're not aware of any evidence to support what are clearly serious allegations. If there is any evidence to support these claims, we would look at it very carefully. For an MP to suggest not only that his own party has tried to blackmail him and his colleagues into compliance, but that these attempts should be reported to the Metropolitan Police is an extraordinary stance for a sitting MP to take, and I can't honestly remember anything like it in my lifetime. This has all happened during a week in which Bury South MP Christian Wakeford defected from the Tories to the Labour Party. And while at this point we can't be sure exactly which Tory MPs have been blackmailed, Wakeford himself has confirmed that he was also one of these other victims of blackmail attempts by the Tory whips. Take a look. I was threatened that I would not get the score for Radcliffe if I didn't vote one particular way. Um, this is a, a town that's not had um, a high school for the best part of 10 years. And how do you feel when holding back the regeneration of a town for a vote? It, it, it didn't sit comfortably, and, and that was really that kind of starting to question my place where I was. So on the one hand, we have Downing Street and Big Dog Johnson denying these allegations. We have William Ragg and Christian Wakeford willing to go on record as saying it did happen. And at the same time, we have the absurd Michael Fabricant, aka Mickey Fab, possibly Boris Johnson's most loyal, die-hard supporter, suggesting that it happens all the time and what's the big deal? 
He tweeted, If I reported every time I'd been threatened by a whip, or if a whip reported every time I had threatened them, the police wouldn't have any time to conduct any other police work. The Speaker of the House, Lindsay Hoyle, is often accused of being a bit of a soft touch and not holding rule breakers and liars in the Commons to account. But he has stated in Parliament that although the whipping system is long established, it would be a contempt to obstruct MPs in doing their duties by trying to intimidate them through the use of threats. The investigation of allegedly criminal conduct is a matter for the police and decisions about prosecution are for the CPS. It will be wrong of me to interfere with such matters. While the whipping system is long established, it is, of course, a contempt to obstruct members in the discharge of their duty or to attempt to intimidate a member in their parliamentary conduct by threats. Angela Rayner, deputy leader of the Labour Party, has called for the accusations of bullying and blackmail to be investigated. She feels there's been a potential misuse of public money, with some areas of the country being starved of funding just because their constituency MP doesn't fall into line to prop up Boris Johnson's failing regime. Leader of the Scottish National Party, Nicola Sturgeon, has labelled it corruption. And Douglas Ross, the Tory leader in Scotland, referred to as a lightweight by Jacob Rees-Smug recently, said the allegations were serious and should be investigated. And ominously, the Metropolitan Police have now said they would consider any complaints made to officers about these alleged criminal acts. So there you have it. Mobsters are running our country, using intimidatory tactics, threats and blackmail against their own side, just to protect the Don. And I don't mean Trump. Although the similarities between him and the personage he illiterately referred to as Britain Trump are particularly highlighted by this latest in a whole raft of scandals from just over the last couple of weeks. To finish this video today, here's my quick top 10 Trump tactics that Johnson has adopted. One, fostering extreme nationalism with false claims of global beating this, that and the other, whether it's the vaccine rollout or getting rid of all restrictions aimed at controlling COVID. Two, demanding unconditional loyalty to the leader, as we've seen in these blackmail allegations covered in this video. Three, demanding a return to a mythical golden age of national greatness. MAGA for Trump, Brexit for Johnson. Four, creating national scapegoats, the Muslim ban and the caravan of refugees for Trump, for Johnson, dinghies in the channel, or all those pesky, hard-working Eastern Europeans taking British jobs from British workers. Jobs that are now remaining vacant post-Brexit, of course, as the British are, as a general rule, not that interested in working in abattoirs, muddy fields, or care homes. Five, attempted control of mass media. For Trump, the cosy relationship with Murdoch and Fox News. For Johnson, the cosy relationship with Murdoch and blackmail aimed at the BBC to influence their political coverage. Six, equating law and order with draconian measures aimed at taking away freedoms to protest. Seven, exhibiting corruption. The number of Trump and former Trump cabinet members who are accused of corruption grows every day, while at the same time we're seeing the Johnson government losing court over the corrupt VIP lane for Covid contracts for Tory cronies, donors and families. Eight, entering into suspicious trade agreements. Trump shares with the Johnson government an obsession with global trade agreements that are often ridiculed by expert economists. Nine, clobbering the already economically disadvantaged with tax cuts for the rich and for corporations and tax or national insurance increases for working families. 10, expressing disdain for intellectuals and scientists. After all, haven't we all had enough of experts, according to Michael Gove and other leading Brexiteers? So that's my top 10 Trump tactics adopted by Johnson. Please feel free to add to this list in the comments below.